I'm Jamie Coble, and my two friends, Em and Scott, asked me to interview them today in preparation for their, what they're calling their supernatural tour. And I would like to start by first saying hello, Scott and Em. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I wanted to start off, if it's okay with you, just because you're creating a YouTube channel, and I wanted to make sure that everyone who finds you will understand you. So sometimes, because we already are familiar with what you're doing, people in the community, we speak as if everyone's on the same page already. So I wanted to start off basic and have you explain it a little bit. So anyone who finds you will understand it. Good? Oh, yes. Okay, good. I love that. I love that. Okay, good. So, you explain it. <laughs> oh, wait, I have more. I have more. Um, starting with, you two met at a Dr. Joe Dispenza workshop. Yeah. Who is a teacher of transformation. I'm just going to keep it basic and you can expand on it. I wanted you to explain that and also we use the term doing the work. If you could explain what that means to you. Awesome. Great question. Thanks. Okay. So um, I guess I'll, I'll briefly start with, um, briefly, I guess. Um, so I, about two years ago, um, never had really never had meditated, didn't really know anything about the work, didn't, you know, follow any kind of religious, spiritual, anything like that. So, um, found, a, I didn't find, my mom had a book sitting on her nightstand and I picked it up one day and it was, you are the placebo by this guy named Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I read the back and it talked about thoughts creating reality. I had no idea what that meant, but it sounded interesting. Read the book. Um, it completely changed my life. So to me, when I, and I notice that all the time, but of course you said that, um, because we talk about the work all the time. And for me, the work just means constant self-improvement in whatever form that may be. So for me, it's, you know, I go to Dr. Joe's workshops and I follow his meditations and that's a tool for me, but everyone has their own tools. To me, it's just constantly trying to evolve to try to not let fear ruin my life, to try to let go of beliefs that hold me back, um, and just, yeah, always evolving. So that's been my journey the last year and a half. Um, to keep it short, um, I had been in a very dysfunctional marriage and life, really, my whole life. And, um, you know, through starting to implement the meditations and going to these workshops, meeting new people, finding myself along the way, um, I started you know, a, a new path, I guess you could say. And that's when this man walked into my life. I had known that I wanted love more than anything, more than when I, when I started this journey, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about, um, experiences. It wasn't about, it was really just about love for me. Seriously. It was just about finding that love and I let it go that it had to come in the form of my husband or anyone, it could just come whatever way it was supposed to come. And amazingly enough, as we all know, as soon as I did that, um, everything that I have ever wanted in somebody walked into my life. And um, yeah, without getting so cheesy, he, he really is everything I could ever ask for in someone else. We, I mean, we literally talk about it all the time. It's it's crazy to me some mornings I wake up and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how does a person like this exist for me? How does somebody that completes me so, not just completes me, but understands me on a level that nobody else has my entire life? So yeah, we, we've been on this journey together for about a year now. And about four months ago, I came out of a meditation and looked at him and said, we're going on tour. And he said, what? And I said, we're going to go travel across the U.S. Sure, honey. Whatever. And we're going to interview good. people. <laughs> and we're going. I didn't think that was going to happen. I was just a piece of it. Oh, yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next week? And where? And, and How long? That. Yeah. So, and then it kind of went away for a while. Um, and then you know, my kids came and stayed with us for a couple of weeks and we had all our kids together, which we had talked about a lot for months and months and months building up to that. So that was a huge milestone for us. Um, and when they left, I, you know, I told him we've, 
got to do this for our kids. They need to see other people, you know, sharing these stories besides just hearing us share them. And it's important to show them that you, you can follow your dreams, even if they sound stupid and silly. And even if you don't necessarily know why you're doing them, because I really don't with this tour, I don't know. I just know it's something that we have to do. And I, I think we, we will find ourselves being inspired a whole oh, lot absolutely. already are sure already are already are already. and um absolutely so and can you explain it a little bit more just for somebody who would be hearing it for the first time what are you doing on your tour so um we are going to start in austin texas and we're going to drive from austin to seattle we will stop at i think six major cities along the way at each stop we will have a group get together of people that we have met or not met, actually a lot of them personally, we've met through, there is a um, Facebook group that is called Dr. Joe Dispenza's Advanced Students. So it's people that have been to some of his workshops. I think there's like 3000 people that are a part of that group. Um, and you and you meet and you talk to these people and they become like family instantly because you know we're all on this journey together, but um, so we have planned get togethers along the way with these group of Dr. Joe students to interview them um, and share their stories with us. So whether it's from a physical healing, an emotional healing, or just how, you know, they've started walking this journey of, of self discovery, we'll say, um, and how they use Dr. How, you know, Dr. Joe's maybe has been a little different than other things they have tried. You know, again, for us, it's what brought us together. And so we want to share that. I want to share that with everyone I can. As I always say, it's like eating at a great restaurant and then you want everyone to try it. You know, yeah, that's so true. It's so good. And you're like, oh my God, I just want everyone to feel this. So for me, it's important to spread that message to as many people as I can. I love and it. For people that don't know me, that is the longest that I've gone without saying anything it's true and if that was the short version <laughs> i know what does the work mean to you and also if you want to share a little bit of your story of how you've transformed your own life that would be great um work for me is just it's kind of really how i i've always kind of lived my life in a way um it's not like you know necessarily dr joe's work it's just uh living bigger I like to call it living bigger. It's living more trusting in yourself in going inside, um, either through meditation or, you know, whatever. I mean, I always meditated in some way, um, some, you know, visualization, whatever, but I always did it from a little kid. I always felt like I was connected to something. Um, didn't really let the outside world affect me so much, but as we get older, the outside world would affect me. So it really would come hard, uh, the outside world. And um, uh, let's see, in uh, 2001, I was paralyzed with a, a uh, autoimmune disease. And in that, doing that, I realized the power that I had because I realized I put myself there. I knew I could get myself out of there, which I did. Um, and that kind of started it. Like, all right, you really got to go down this road and really find out what is this life? What, what is it really about? And you get connected for a while and then it starts to fall off. And, you know, life comes back in and it starts to, you know, for me, it started to take over. Um, stress became a lot. Um, I own my own business, always have. And that would kind of run me. Um, so it just events would just come that would just seem to pile on and pile on and pile on until the point where I guess I listened. I finally listened. Um, I got involved with Dr. Joe, or not involved with Dr. Joe, because I saw him in What the Bleep, and uh, watching him in that movie, I thought, you know what, that's what I did. That's how I healed myself, and not knowing, and not really having any kind of uh, expectation. But in watching him, I just knew that this, 
this is what I must have done. So maybe there's something to this. And then he became the man in my truck. I would listen to him every, every day, driving around. I would always listen to him and listen to him for years. I mean, probably 10 years. And then finally went to a workshop and that's where it really, the rubber met the road. And that's where I really realized, holy shit, whoops. Holy shit, I've been doing this right all along. I've been doing this right all along. It's the outside that's maybe not right. So that was a big realization for me. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a phenomenal ride. Um, I, had, uh, I was involved in a tragedy about six years ago, and I had a lot of guilt from that, a lot of... Uh, and do you want to share? Well, I was, my best friend and I were walking down a beach, and it was an inlet beach, so not like on the ocean, but it was on an inlet and with our kids and the beach collapsed and we all went in the water and we got caught in a current and I managed to make it sure with my daughter on my back. She was nine at the time or seven at the time. And um, ultimately he drowned and, and watching him, his last moments was really, um, it was difficult for me, but it was also kind of beautiful because I kind of watched him ascend, I guess, if you want to say. I know it sounds strange, but I really kind of saw him just, um, just surrender. It was like something called him home. And I saw his struggle of being in that moment, knowing his daughter was still in the water and he was trying to save her, but he couldn't because he had gotten so far away from her. And I saw his struggle between this world and that world. And I, it's hard to explain that, but the feeling that I got of it was he had, not that he had to choose, but it was like a voice was telling him it's time to come home. And he was like, okay, and she's gonna be okay. You have to trust. And ultimately, you know, she, we had a rescue. So um, that moment though left a lot of guilt in me, uh, a lot of survivor's guilt, and it was heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. So that's when I really knew I gotta do something here yeah. because it's just killing me. And I would, every night, every single night, I would relive that moment over and over and over again. Very rarely slept, mind would go 100 miles an hour, and I would constantly ask him, please, you have to come. You have to forgive me. You know, this is my best bud. It's like, dude, I need you. And then finally, in a workshop, <clears throat> in a floor, on a floor in Mexico, he came. And, you know, it was just, you know, a few simple words of it. It's never been me. It's always been you. Meaning, I don't, I've always forgiven you you're the one who hasn't forgiven yourself. So we called each other ugly. Um, that was our nickname for each other. And I always said I was, I was looking for ugly. And, you know, I ended up writing a book called, I, you know, Finding Ugly. And that's really what it was about. It was about finding me, not necessarily him, but really just trying to find what I am inside. And really, that's what we're all just trying to do, love. And we're all just trying to find that. And we go out into the world into this 3D reality and we you know, buy cars, we buy boats, we think this party's gonna be great and change my life and this job is gonna be phenomenal and change my life. None of it matters because in the end, it's just trying to get in touch with who you really are. And I think that ultimately is doing the work, getting in touch with your ugly, the, the thing that is inside you that you finally, hopefully find. Anyway, that's what the work is for me. Uh, what was the other question? What is this tour? Oh, the tour. The tour, <clears throat> again, is, you know, Em and I both have our stories. We've shared our stories um, a little bit. And it really is just finding people's stories. I love when people say to me, you know, well, I just never fit. Uh, <clears throat> to me, that is just like the greatest thing because you don't want to fit. Um, if you fit into this 3D world, then you're not connected to what you really are. That, that's just my feeling. Um, so when people say, I, don't, I never fit, 
I was always different. I'm like, well, welcome home because mm -hmm. she never fit. No. I never fit. <laughs> I never fit. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of perfect. That fit well, perfect together. Yeah, and, and that's why we don't fit, because mm -hmm. we're just separate pieces all over the place. And now through this work, it's bringing us together as a nucleus. Mm -hmm. Now we're kind of, the body parts are starting to come together. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's we're, all, we're all branches, mm -hmm. and, but we still are the tree. So we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, it, we're just coming back to the tree. So you know, the tour really is just connecting with those people and feeling that love and just trusting that the people that show up are supposed to show up. And if we show up, we're supposed to show up. If we don't, we don't. And, you know, hopefully we can take somebody else's story that maybe they didn't necessarily want to share. Maybe it's something they didn't know how to share. Maybe it's something they didn't even know until they started doing this work, which I think it, it's happened a lot taking that story, sharing it with people, and maybe it connects with somebody and says, oh my God, that's me. That woman is telling her story. She's telling my story. And maybe that frees that person. And really, in the end, isn't that just what we want? We just want to be free from ourselves. And I think, too, part of it um, for me is again, standing, standing on the edge of my fear. So this was kind of a big thing for me. And I thought, okay, well, great way to step into yeah. the unknown and challenge myself. And it's so funny because you always, you want these things or you think you want these things and then they come and then you're like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> really? really? But I really pushed And she had that, side. she had that moment yesterday. I Wait, did. It's... What have I done? Oh I my don't go. God. And she's like, I don't want to go. I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm going yeah. because now I'm excited. Yeah. And we're going to go. So, yeah. you know, actually, like, that's what I like about you two because you support each other's dreams. And I oh, think that's, that's the way it should be. Absolutely. You're just, you're on the same team. Absolutely. Yes. Oh my God. So it's much. so, it, it's really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Is ridiculous mm -hmm. how how perfect a fit that we are mm -hmm. and you know she kind of started on it a little bit so when we had met um, it wasn't necessarily like a spark it was just like wow what's happening here you know what I mean it's like this is crazy like I was saying to myself that this is crazy mm -hmm. because there is something here it's like I just really met her and just being with her for the last whatever couple hours, I feel like I've been with her all my whole life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that is me. Mm -hmm. It's a mirror. Mm -hmm. It's like everything that I love that I have found in myself by doing this work mm -hmm. is in a mirror right in front of me. Yeah. So it was like I was looking at myself, that my true self, mm -hmm. my truth, my heart. I really was looking at my heart. And I think, um, we, we both came through some pretty big experiences, you know, in the meditations. And I think that, as I say, my heart exploded and her heart exploded and somehow they just, they became one heart. And I know it sounds, ah, uh, or cheesy yeah. or whatever. It's really what happened. I, I swear to <laughs> you, yeah. because even people say, oh my God, it happened so fast. Well, I just knew I was yeah. not gonna let it go. Yeah. There is hmm. no way that I could ever let that go. And, you know, we've lost a lot. I mean, a lot of people have fallen out of our lives. A lot of people have said, you know, oh, you're, he's crazy. And oh, well, I don't care. You can say whatever the hell you want. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't matter to me. You know, just talking uh, the other night to uh, a woman who, you know, doc, she just was having such a horrible time for like 10 years and doctors had no answers for her. We don't know what it is. Well, that's a good thing. And we don't, you know, we don't know what to do for you. And she just had to figure it out. And she did. And 19 years old. 19 that started with her. And, and it was hor a horrible, horrible. And she, story. she didn't really have the spiritual background, nope. nothing. She had no she reference does now. for anything. Yeah. So she had to go within and she healed herself. Mm -hmm. Just, through knowing it would only come from within. And, sp and, and she will be interviewed. So. And she will be, yeah. Oh, but not, and, and of course, and this is how this work works. She just came to our door. She literally came to our door. We had no idea 
anything about her story. She came with somebody that we were just talking to about doing some work with. And it was, you know, his girlfriend. And all of a sudden we're hearing this story and, and I'm like, oh my God, this is, see how this works? And, <laughs> you know, when you say um, spirituality or whatever, it doesn't have to be, you know, God or whatever. Yeah. It's just... Yeah whatever gets you there. Yeah. And if it's yeah. taking out the garbage, if that's spirituality yeah. for you, hey, whatever gets you there. You know, it's not about, you know, Dr. Joe, it's not about that. It, it's, a, it's about what gets you there. He's a tool, just. Oh, he's a tool. Oh, he's a tool. He's Did a you tool. Really call he's Dr. a Joe tool, a tool, like. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, I think, you know, it's, it's, you know what, like he said, whatever you find that works for you. I think the most important thing, as I said before, is, you know, I think why his is a little different is because it's focused on, it all comes from within. There's nothing outside of you. So Dr. And that's Joe why is I, within. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Joe is within. You are, you're but Dr. Joe. he's the Joe. first person I, I've really heard that says, it's, it's all beliefs. It is. It's, it's all, all placebo beliefs. and yeah. it comes from within. Your healing will only yeah. ever come from within. Yeah. It's not, and you have to go do five jumping jacks and then turn around in a certain way five times and then lay your bed a certain direction. And, you know, it's, it's really very simple. Um, okay. So I want to kind of jump back to that last discussion a little bit, because I think that you, I mean, you're going to tell everybody else's stories. And I think one of the stories that will impact other people based on your transformations is you've shared with me individually that you also had lists of qualities that you wanted in a partner. If you were going to envision your perfect life and who you wanted to be with, you had these lists in your mind and you were creating that consciously. And then you came. So I wanted you, part of your story is to, for the people who may be watching that don't have satisfying partnerships, or maybe somebody who's watching that longs for it, but has a limiting belief around it, what would you say to them? Um, for How me, it was... Um, there were certain things I love to do. Love, love, love to ski, love the outdoors, but love to ski, love the ocean, love to be on the ocean. Um, that's a huge part of my life. And, you know, fishing, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I'd love to just go out on the boat. And I would see my friends bring their, you know, wives out and I'd be like, oh my God, it's just what I want. And I would see uh, one good friend of mine, he would always post on Facebook, him and his wife being on the boat and the sunsets and that's yeah, just what I want. And then I would just look through um, like magazines or there was a, uh, a boating forum and guys would post pictures of them and their wives, you know, on the boat. And, I'd, and I would just, it was just like a silent want. It's like, God, I just wish I had that. I want that so bad to share that with somebody. And you just kind of file it and it just goes back into your head. And it wasn't like anything I was really searching for. I wasn't doing that at all. Mm -hmm. I was, I was just in my life. Mm -hmm. And no expectation, no expectation whatsoever. And, you know, especially doing the work when I found this, I didn't have necessarily some, uh, someone that I could share it thoroughly with that maybe understood it or saw it the way I saw it. So I think, with us, it was so unexpected mm -hmm. because it was never expected. I never looked for this. This isn't what I was looking for. Um, I really wasn't looking. So for someone who doesn't have that partner, I think it's a very simple thing to get that partner. And that is to be your future self, right? So that's one of the tools we teach. You like one person, I, I would say, just lay in bed and look at the bathroom door and just think, oh my God, he's in there. And just do that like he's really in there. And just feel that, what that would feel like. The man of my dreams, who I would always dream about, is in that bathroom right now, right behind that door, he's there, and the door's gonna open, and my heart's gonna explode. And I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're training our brain and we're training our bodies for that moment to come. So in, in order for that moment to come, the moment has to come to bring the feeling. So um, that's really, I think, it, it really isn't hard. It's just connecting and it's just 
fooling yourself to believe you're already that person. And that goes for relationship, money. It doesn't make a difference what it is. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, it just comes down to be just happy. Mm -hmm. Just be happy. Even if you're not, fake it. Find the things that make you happy. Money isn't going to make you happy. A relationship's not going to make you happy. If you don't have yourself, if you don't find yourself, then you can't find anything else. So you have to start there. Yeah, I mean, I obviously would ditto a lot of what he said. For me, it was, um, you know, I, I, I was in a, a dysfunctional marriage, but I was in a dysfunctional marriage with myself as well. So, um, you know, I think my life was a reflection of what, mm. of my thoughts and yes, feelings inside absolutely. and how I felt I deserved to be treated and, and vice versa. So yeah. um, I thought I had no way out when I started this work. I started journaling every day. And it's funny because we found my journal a couple months mm. ago and, and was reading through it. And it started off with um, my ex-husband's name, Sean, and um, started off with, you know, Sean will be this, we'll do this together, you know, we'll do this work together. Mm -hmm. and, and it was wanting that. It was thinking if he just changed, then everything will be better. If he just follows this, then everything will be better. And then as I started progressing more and doing the meditations and looking within more and trying to be conscious more and um, it, it changed to, I think I just said him. 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 It, I would change it to him. So it wasn't Sean. It yeah, was him. It was just him. And so the first workshop I went to, I actually, I did actually make a list of, of everything that, you know, and it wasn't like he'll have brown hair and he'll, it was gorgeous. Um, yeah. It was, my kids will love him. I will feel free. I will feel like I can be myself. I will. And I didn't know if I wasn't writing mm -hmm. that about my husband yeah. at the time. I was just knew that that's what I wanted to feel was that love. Yeah. So a couple workshops later, had an experience like he said, totally broke my heart open, fell so in love with myself more than I even thought possible. And of course, that's the moment where you don't need, I didn't need any of that. I didn't need somebody for that. I just mm -hmm. was excited yeah. that I found that yeah. finally in my life for myself mm -hmm. and things became so clear. And um, yeah, a couple of weeks later, literally everything I wrote down, so we didn't need it. It's not like we yeah. needed that within sense. each other. Yeah. And you know, we had, to overcome ourselves for a while because oh, things yeah. would come up and, and mm -hmm. test us. And, um, and it was a lot of trusting, a lot really of trusting was. because I think we both listened to the voices in our heads that was finally saying, all right, are you going to shut up now? Yeah. And then when you do, mm -hmm. when you do finally, when mm -hmm. Scott shuts up mm -hmm. and when you, you get rewarded and when you do something that, um, you thought you would never do, mm -hmm. or it's really hard to do, or face mm -hmm. a fear. Mm -hmm. um, it's scary, but you get rewarded. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of, we always say that, you know, the guys upstairs, not the God, but they're just kind of a couple of stoned, you know, <laughs> 20 year olds say it like we're little puppets, you know, and, screwing with us. and screwing with us and say, Hey, let's do this to Scott. Let's see what happens. Let's see how he handles it. Yeah. Oh my God, he did that really well. Yeah. Throw him a bump. Yeah. It, it's just so crazy that the, once you connect to that, it seems that it happens over and over, faster and faster, mm -hmm. so much more frequently to where now today, it's just like people say, oh my God, you're not going to believe this. We, you know, like, tell oh, us yeah. this amazing story. We're like, yeah, we, we, we get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're not going to believe it. No, we do. We get and, it. and even with each other. I mean, last night we're sitting out by our fire going, wow, like a year ago we were fighting for this. Yeah. We had to fight for this. For the, for the calmness, so we, for the freedom, yeah, for, for the, the freedom. freedom, for the so, freedom. Because it was not easy. Everybody, I think yeah. everybody in her life thought, oh my God, she's crazy. She has lost her mind. She's in a cult. And then same with me. Oh, he must be in a cult. He's lost his mind. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't that because you created your desires and you didn't put a limitation on it and you surrendered it to the divine. That's it. To provide it for you. And it came. It's very simple. That's the textbook. What you just said, when you open the book to see how you do it, that's it. That's how, it, that's how you do it. You just, this is what I want. You let it go and you imagine what it's gonna be when it comes, mm -hmm. you let it go, and you just do it and repeat. 
and it'll just show up and not have an attachment to it. Yeah. But I just to be free. I think too, those situations come up for you to overcome yourself. Oh yeah. Oh, they, oh, they come up to overcome. And every time you do it. Yeah. You know, and listen, it, the one thing I think people, and this goes with healing too, because you always hear, oh, you know, you were healed, you were healed. We're never healed. Our life is a road of healing. That's what we start out as kids, trying to find and trying to heal ourselves to go to the next step. So you are never necessarily healed. It's just a road. So when people say, oh yeah, he healed himself. Well, yeah, but I healed myself of that specific mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. I've been healing myself all mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. And you get smacked down mm -hmm. and shit comes mm -hmm. and it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is. It's not easy. Still happens for us. Absolutely. The higher you get, mm -hmm. the higher the wave is, the, the further the drop. Mm -hmm. And it is not easy. That ties in a little bit to another question I wanted to ask you because I notice the two of you, you seem to be pretty skilled at thinking in an unlimited way, which is something that you really have to develop. Um, so do you think that anyone can attain that quality? And how, if so, do you notice changes in your own life because of your ability to do that? Um, wow, that's a very, that's a really interesting question. Um, she's really good at this. She's very good at this. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I've never thought about it that way. I think... A, it definitely helps having a partner that, that thinks in that same way because you're always challenging each other, but you're, you're doing it in a very loving way. So, you know, our first reaction, like, I, I, I'm like, I really mean this, we'll bicker and, and joke, but we really don't fight because we know if something's coming up, it's within us. So it's yeah. not to blame oh, him yeah, yeah. or blame oh, me. Sure. It's like, okay. Do we even, I don't think we don't like a sure. funny bicker. Like this Oh, it's right a funny bicker. Like this it's right now. It's just a <laughs> But I, I don't know why I tell him I have this I, I, maybe unreasonable desire to constantly evolve myself and let go of beliefs. I think... For me, it's sometimes I feel like it's a curse in a way because I always throughout life could get things really quickly. So I could learn things. I mean, just show me once and I got it. Okay. And I, and I can dive into it. So with this work, you know, Dr. Joe's work was like, oh my God, okay, I get it. I jump right in. And, you know, finding somebody else that, that is like that and understands that and goes, you know, I mean, we always say it's all inside you because we just really do believe that, that, that any fear you put on yourself is only comes from within. Only comes it from only you. does. And the more I let go of these beliefs, the more crazy shit shows up in my life. And it, it's so insane. Some days I'm like a crazy, good shit. Crazy good oh, shit. Oh, crazy good crazy. shit. To crazy the point where shit. we have trouble sleeping at night because we're so excited because we're uh, it, so it is, like... It's, it is crazy. I mean, it's it, just crazy. It I mean, like that girl coming to yeah. our door. She, I mean, this story comes to us now. And she and doesn't know anything about Dr. No, Joe. Doesn't know anything about, about us. us. And doesn't like, know anything. We're, we're leaving to go on tour to interview people mm -hmm. just like you that went... No doctor can give me an answer. I can yeah. find my own answer. And I did. I healed I myself. Did. Yeah. And, and, it, and she it, wouldn't even have said something. But the whole yeah. thing was I wanted to make a video because I, um, I have footage or whatever, videos of me when I was learning to walk again in the parallel bars. And I wanted to get that transferred into a digital format. So that's why we had this guy come over to say, hey, and maybe we could do like a video. You have any ideas? Because I want to do like a video to inspire people, you know, of me being in the parallel bars and then me skiing and because I have some really cool bit of, um, footage of a skiing. Mm -hmm. And here comes this, and I'm telling the story of, oh, wait, you're paralyzed. And I'm telling the story and I see her and she's just like, I have a similar story. And I'm like, of course you do. Mm -hmm. You attracted it to you. I'm like, yeah. oh my And three God. hours later, yeah. you know. We're oh yeah, three hours later, we're just like, we are best of friends. Like yeah. it's, it's we, we always say it. When you find somebody 
doing. And again, this work, it doesn't have to be Dr. Yeah. Joe, Dr. Joe's work. It's just being in this place, self-improvement, yeah. whatever you want to call going it. With Finding your, yeah. going with it, whatever, yeah. whatever bullshit yeah. you want to call it. Take your responsibility for your own creation. Yes. 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 It's responsibility. Boom. Good. Yeah. And hey, absolutely. It, listen, this is, you know, if, if, if you have a disease which is killing you, and if you acknowledge that, you know what, maybe I did this for some reason, maybe I created this, then you can uncreate yeah, it. Yeah, the power. Then you can that. heal yourself. If you create it, you can uncreate it. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. I felt that. I really knew that I had put myself in that bed without question, I knew I did. So I knew that I could get myself out. And that's why. It's all inside me. My mm -hmm. eyes don't look out. My eyes look back into my mind and I'm just looking at a movie screen. Mm -hmm. And that's who I am. Whatever is on that movie screen. But the best part about it is the movie screen is in my mind. So everything that is on the movie screen, the walls, this, whatever this mm -hmm. thing is, this hideously <laughs> ugly couch, this that house, we created. this outside <laughs> I see the trees all of it is just inside my mind so I can change the location I can change the environment I can change what I see I can change my partner I can change anything if I only accept what I have done already good or bad good or bad and I and I think another thing too is we really don't live like most people I mean we don't watch the news. No. We're very limited on what we put in our quote unquote fishbowl. We yes. don't engage in politics. It's, in, it's taking your power back. And I think limiting, there is so much that our brains get filled with on an everyday. Yes. Day. And, and we always say, you know, we, we just, we live very different lives and it has not always been easy as, as no. we said, it's, but mm -mm. the reward, the, the people I have met, you know, him alone and you guys and, um, you know, the experiences that I've had way outweigh those yes. moments of, of complete fear. But I think every time you do that, you go, oh, wow, the world didn't fall apart and I got through it and it was even mm -hmm. better than I thought. And every time you do that, so... I guess to answer your question of, is everyone capable of it? Absolutely. Oh my everyone, God, yeah. you know, everyone's a part of us. Everybody's everyone's capable of, of feeling love and being free. You everybody and everybody's to be willing to take that yes. step and push against it. Is that easy? Hell no. Is it worth it? Hell yes. Always. Yeah, it is. It really is a question of living your fear or living your love, you know, and you can, you can do both. And, and, Honestly, I think it's a lot easier to live fear because mm -hmm. I think we all do it really well. Mm -hmm. And I think when, you know, when she says that, oh, like um, my best bud, of, he, which who we live with, uh, he was saying, well, did you hear about the hurricane? I'm like, no, because there's no hurricane. <laughs> and I mean, he's like, oh, I forgot the fishbowl. Yes. And I'll be like, yeah, it's he, not in the fishbowl. He thinks we're <laughs> Does, do you realize that people, are, people have died? I said, I mean, listen, I know it sounds crazy, and I don't mean to sound insensitive, mm. but how do you know? How do you know people have died? How do you know? And how do you know that that death hasn't freed them? Mm. Because we all, that's another one. Well, you know, oh, well, he died. Well, maybe that was the greatest thing that ever happened to him. Because maybe that's what he's been trying to get to. Maybe he's been trying to get out of this body so he can feel loved. Well, maybe he accomplished it. And I think we don't know other people's journeys. No, we don't know anybody's you know, journey. So who, who yeah. are we to ever say, I think it's, you know, I always tell him it's a great conversation he should have with people about death and, and really looking at that in a different way than we've been taught our whole lives. Cause we don't know. Yeah. And if you want to call it heaven, sure. Sounds like heaven to me, but I don't think there's a guy in the white with a gate saying you're it, you're allowed in or you're not allowed in. That's just bullshit to me. Uh, I think that that's all the questions that I have. I think that you've answered throughout what love over fear means to you both because you're living that way. And yes. I love your sweatshirt. And she creates yeah. t-shirts and tank tops and sweatshirts that say love over fear. They're awesome. I just want to say that I'm really proud of you guys because you created this vision in your mind and you're going after it. And it's scary, but you're still going forward with it. And it's exciting because you're going to be sharing a lot of stories with people that they may not otherwise have had an opportunity to hear. And because a few people already, actually, that I've interviewed via Zoom um, 
one lady we ran into mm -hmm. at, at this um, group that got together, she was talking to me, or I was talking to her about the um, Gwen, the first lady I interviewed, and you know what she did with her spine. The lady's like, oh my gosh, I have all these spine problems. Of course, can I, you know, I said, oh, you got to watch this. And I was able to connect them via email. And then it just happened again with um, his accountant's wife was mm -hmm. Parkinson's. And we know a lady that um, was in Cancun that uh, is working on, on healing herself from Parkinson's. So I was able to connect those two. So that's what it is really about. it is really crazy because I think that just comes that's again that's the work that's how it shows up mm -hmm. you know for me all of this is it all goes back to six years ago when I watched him in that moment of reaching his brink you know your and friend my friend and when when he when he I when I couldn't save him when I didn't have the ability to save him it opened the world that I have to save somebody in his name. So it was always, I will never let anybody forget you. I will never let anybody forget your story. And I will tell that story to whoever will or will not listen. Because I think when people hear that story, it, it summons courage and strength in themselves to go out and find and fight what they've been looking for. So his death really is the gift that I believe these stories will show for other people. Because I know he's there. I know he's in my head saying, come on, ugly, let's go. This is what we got to do. This is, you have to do this because my, maybe my life was, was taken so others can grow. Mm -hmm. So others can, you know, even me. Even me. Because it, it forced you to grow. It has to. It has to. It's either that or you live in, you live in that fear. Yeah. Okay. I just want to add one last thing and then we yes. will let you go. And I won't say a word. Um, I've been there. We both have been there in those moments where you feel helpless. Mm. And <laughs> whether it be you feel like you're overweight or you're in debt or you're an abusive marriage, or you're a drug addict, or you're lonely, or whatever it is. And it really is just about taking a step, taking a different step. There, there's, mm -hmm. no, there's no easy pill. There's, it really just comes down to find something and take one step. Don't worry that, about that, five steps. Yeah. Take one step. And you always will have what you need. Always. 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 And, and, and what you need is the moment that you're in. Yeah. Don't don't look at tomorrow even. Just just feel what you are right now, where you are right now. And where is that fear coming from? And usually it's just this masked man who just is sitting there poking. Mm -hmm. And once you figure that out, and it's not easy to figure that out. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to do that. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. Either one of us, Dr. Joe, we all go through it. Nobody is immune from that. Nobody is above that because that's what this, this realm, this 3D reality is, mm -hmm. relearning. And um, yeah. that, that's, that's the hard one. But if you can just bring yourself present in the moment, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think we're all set. Well, we had a bunch. Uh... Oh, I wish I could join you. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I yeah. know. You'll be with us in Seattle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I will see you soon. Yeah. Okay, well, have a great journey, and I can't wait to keep up with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in Seattle. All right. Okay. okay. Bye, Amy. Bye. Bye.